everybody. So I thought for today I would do an eight and a half by 11 layout on my channel. Uh, I haven't done one in a while. It's been a little bit. I like to uh, put a couple of them into rotation every month. So I like to do two or three eight and a half by 11 album uh, pages and then um, at least one card pay video and at least two or three traveler's notebooks. So uh, what I wanted to do here was I really wanted to play with this acetate and what I end up doing does not need to be limited to an eight and a half by 11 layout. This is totally something you can do on a normal 12 by 12 page. But I thought it was a really, I think it turned out really, really cool. And um, I wanted to play with this acetate because I really wanted to share with you an idea for it. This acetate is the specialty paper that is part of the um, Heritage Collection. And so I really wanted to play with it a little bit. So I'm gonna start by cutting the acetate down to eight and a half by 11. We're actually gonna create a cool background for our page today. Uh, I am keeping that leftover, the one bit, not the not the part where I cut an inch off for the 11, for 11 inches, but when I cut eight and a half by eight and a half, that three and a half inch strip, I'm gonna keep that for another page because it's still 12 inches long and it would make a nice border. I'm also gonna use this beautiful peachy pink paper. This is also from the Heritage Collection. I think it's really pretty and um, it goes with my photo very well. So we're gonna create my last Beauty and the Beast layout. <laughs> I had one more photo I really wanted to document and scrapbook from this trip in 2018. How about them apples? Okay, so what did I do? <laughs> I layered the acetate on top of the peach and then I cut it at an angle. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and adhere the peach to the top half and then the acetate over top of the peach. And then I'm gonna put just the acetate down on the bottom, which is gonna give my lay out this like split look that I think turned out so, so cool. Anyway, um, this will be my last page from when we went to Pittsburgh to see the musical Beauty and the Beast. Um, and I actually only ended up with, I think, three layouts from this page, from this trip. So that's not too bad. It's not, wasn't, you know, an insane amount. I know I want to cover up that top corner of my picture. So my picture is eight and a half, is four by six. This is the picture that they kind of had. So it wasn't like you paid for them, but they had this thing set up at the musical where you could get your picture taken in front of like the musical thing. And um, the only problem was, was that there was this huge like advertisement in the corner for the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, which was fine, except it wasn't in the same colors as the rest. Um, so I definitely want to cut, cover up that top corner there. So I am loving this. Isn't this cool? I think this turned out so cool. And you know, you could do it with an eight and a half by, with 12 by 12. Just don't cut your paper down. Don't cut your acetate down. Don't cut your, the, the, your, um, peach paper down, just layer them up. And actually you would only, no, you'd still need to cut them both. Okay, so I'm gonna match up my papers here so that they match exactly. And they're just gonna kind of turn colors, so cool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I start to try to trim this off, but <laughs> wait for your glue to dry because the acetate just fell off. This is gonna be an ongoing issue I'm gonna have throughout this layout. So um, because I want to kind of, I don't want glue spots, I only put glue under the acetate where I knew my photo was gonna go. Everything is gonna have to be glued down with wet glue uh, because um, I was worried that my, just my tape runner adhesive wouldn't hold everything down. So I want to put my photo right here. I want to back it a little bit with something. I'm just not quite sure what yet. I'm going to end up with these frames, which I think turn out really nice. So I'm going to kind of stagger these frames and then put my picture on top of them like that. So the frames are from the Flourish collection. I'm going through the things I pulled, see what I'm actually going to use. There are two pieces that I really, really want to use for this layout. One of them is this kind of terrarium clunk kind of looking thing uh, because 
it kind of looks like the um, rose in the little vase thing in the musical and in the movie. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of play with that as, as something that I'm going to use. And this really helped to use this up because... Um, I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to use it again. So I thought about lots of different ways I could add. I looked and looked and looked for like the perfect red rose, but it wasn't. I couldn't find one. So we are going to go with this kind of like peachy rose because it's not going to match exactly and that's okay. Um, the rose that's in the musical. But it, it's close enough and it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm um, strategically gluing, because this is a vellum, there's lots and lots of vellum and acetate on this layout. I'm just gonna put that up there because I'm gonna create something that's a little bit like a, I'm gonna create almost a diagonal kind of look across the page. And so I felt that that would be good. I'm gonna pop this little um, gold flower up. We're also gonna do a lot of mixing metals today, which will be fun. The other two pieces I really wanted to use because I probably would never use them again are these two. So one of these, I believe that that Dresden Lion die cut is from Open Book. So it's quite old. And then I also have this ticket, which also could be from Open Book as well. And so I decided ticket because we're at, we're going to see a musical. And that gold dressed in piece just screamed beast to me, right? Like it was just like perfect. It fit right in there, nestled in there perfectly and fabulous. So happy that that got on a page and that it makes sense on a page. Like that's really cool. I'm so happy I did that. Okay, more acetate. I told you this is like vellum and acetate crazy, this layout. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rose I'm going to add a little bit of glue just to the bottom of the rose, and I'm going to tuck it under this. I'm going to tuck it under our little um, rose jar. Let's call it a rose jar. I'm going to let it kind of adhere for a little bit so it doesn't fall off and do wonky stuff. And then I'm going to trim it off. And I'm going to take that leftover piece and I'm gonna put it off to the side. So as is the case with like 99.9% .9 of my Maggie Holmes layouts, I definitely pulled out more product than I'm gonna use, but that's okay. Because then I definitely have some options, right? So we have the rows at the top with the little um, jar and then we're gonna come down and we have our little beast. I think this looks really, really great. Uh, next, I'm gonna just add a little bit more glue. That um, little gold foil lion-y thing was kind of popping up a little bit. I wasn't too keen on that. Now, these are from, I think, I think these are from, they're either from Open Book or they're from Confetti. I'm not 100% sure, but they're like chalk stickers. Before I started the layout, I grabbed a um, gel pen and wrote on that one just to make sure that it was going to do what I needed, you know, make sure it was gonna write, okay? Then I'm also gonna take this black love and that just adds some pops of black because there is pops of black in the acetate. There's some black in that vellum piece. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab, I think I'm looking for my, I should be looking for my alphabet stickers, or alphabet, there we are. Now these are rose gold. So let's talk about mixing metals. For me, the key to mixing metals is to make sure that you have even distribution of both of the metals that you want to use. So in this case, we have rose gold stickers, rose gold foil on the little jar. And then we also have rose gold in the, um, frames that are behind the photo. Regular gold. We have the accents on the black stickers. We have some of those gold die cuts and then we also have our little uh, gold Dresden beast. So the trick is don't make it so that your layout is all gold with this like one silver spot or this one rose gold spot. 
you want to make sure that if you're mixing metals, those metals mix through your entire layout. And then it looks intentional and it looks cool and it doesn't look awkward and out of place. So I went through my sequin stash and what I went for was something matte and flat and a very light color. I knew that I needed some, some kind of confetti, some kind of sprinkly bits on this layout, but I didn't want something that was going to be really big and sparkly. I wanted something little, and so I went through all my sequins. I think this is from an older Wild Whisper collection, but it just has these small matte peachy colored sequins perfect for the colors going on in my photo, perfect for the colors going on in my layout. And I thought that it worked really, really well to kind of create some clusters. And also I placed them in such a way that you can start at the top right of the page and you can follow those sequins. Your eye can follow the sequins all the way down through the photo and through the rest of the page. It gives your eye something to follow so that the flow of your page is your the person looking at your page is looking at where you want them to look right and that is where we are going to call this one done i would love to see your take on this fun design idea using some specialty paper and matting it kind of on a diagonal i hope that you've enjoyed your this layout today and have a wonderful maggie holmes monday bye